Good evening, and welcome to my show. Watch it freely, and of your own free will. I am your humble host, Count Vigostein. What is it with horror films and their use of gorillas? There's Murders in the Rue Morgue, The Gorilla, The Ape, and countless others. But the absolute worst of these primate pictures has to be The White Gorilla. Get that childish filth out of here! There we go. Much better filth. The White Gorilla is an interesting case in that it's technically not one film, but two. Two films! Ah, ah, ah! The movie was made by combining footage from a 1927 silent film called Perils of the Jungle and adding new footage from 1945. This may seem ungodly cheap, but as a scientist myself, I admire this Frankenstein-like attempt at creating the perfect film out of two very different movies. The only problem is that the end result is less Boris Karloff and more Aaron Eckhart. But I'm procrastinating the review. A thousand apologies. Our protagonist, Steve Collins, tells a group of men a quite confusing story of jungle explorers while sprinkling in an unrelated subplot of a white gorilla that was shunned by the other gorillas and has a hatred of everyone, but specifically, Steve Collins. This is a real doozy piece of filmmaking, folks. Some turn to Citizen Kane as their inspiration, others turn to Gone with the Wind. Bah! What are they to white gorilla? It's sheer brilliance at how it uses Steve Collins as a narrator, who explains everything, but when he is shown in the flashbacks, does nothing to participate in the jungle explorer plot, because he wasn't there when that part was filmed. It's remarkable how the director chooses to keep the 1927 footage, even if its speed does not match with the 1945 footage. And its avant-garde storytelling pattern is unmatched. Steve explains what happened, we go to flashback, Animal shenanigans occur, rinse and repeat. Brilliant. And the white gorilla costume must make the likes of Jack Pierce and Rick Baker wish they even had an inkling of talent to create such a masterpiece. <laughs> Let's be fair, it is a really bad looking costume. I mean seriously, have you ever seen such a fake looking gorilla? Oh, thank you Janos, my totally real and not fake at all gorilla. Now go. Skedaddle, you silly thing. There you go. Don't knock over the lights, all right. <laughs> Where was I? Yet I must say, for the love of Lugosi, could you tone it down with the animal background noises? We get you in the jungle, white gorilla, but you don't need it to go on and on and on. I'm very inclined to step in candle wax in my ears. Again. I may be too harsh on the film though. It could very well be a comedy. How else would you explain moments where action is happening in the 1927 footage, followed by a cut to Steve, who acts as if he's watching what's unfolding, but always fails to do something to help the people in the 1927 footage? That reminds me. Did I ever tell you how I was present during the incident with the Phantom of the Opera? It's true! I remember it like it was yesterday. I was right behind Eric when he enacted his plan to drop the chandelier on all those poor, innocent people. Sadly, there was nothing I could do to help. Yes, those were the days. Anyway. But I am furious at this film for lying to me. It claims to have an all-star cast. What all-star cast? Where is Peter Lorre? Where is Vincent Price? Where is my beloved Elsa Lanchester? Though there is a Monroe Talbot in the credits. Hmm, maybe it's Larry Talbot's long-lost cousin. Damn you, white gorilla! You damn dirty ape! Oh, and did I mention that there's a fight between two gorillas? Forget Freddy vs. Jason, forget Alien vs. Predator, and forget King Kong vs. Godzilla. It's all about white gorilla vs. black gorilla. Filmed far away and for less than a minute. Bravo, White Gorilla. Bravo. I applaud your focused commitment to being absolutely incompetent. I wish to analyze and dissect you in order to understand just what the heck you even are. In hindsight, maybe I should have picked the other film on this DVD set, that being Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorilla. 
You know what? No. I don't need to see another horror film featuring a man in a terrible gorilla costume. Janos! Janos, take this DVD and add it to the collection. There you go, good boy. All right. There you go. He's so adorable. Anyway, where does White Gorilla stand in the rating system? We have multiple gorilla suits, multiple hammy performances, and multiple uses of stock footage. It's perfect for your bad movie nights. Let's give it three skulls out of four. That's all for now. Goodbye, my children of the night. May your nightmares hopefully not feature gorillas, as mine undoubtedly will. So long.